So, it's been a while since we've talked about Nuke here on the channel. And no, we're not talking about any specific radioactive bomb. We're talking about Colorado Avalanche forward Valerie Nichushkin, as Nuke is his very appropriate nickname. Last time we discussed Nichushkin here on the channel, it was in a video discussing the Toronto Maple Leafs and whether or not the Leafs could get Nichushkin. This was because at the time of recording that video, there was no contract extension from Colorado given out to Nuke just yet, that in which is a status that is now changed. Let's go over to Nichushkin and highlight the overall profile, what's changed since then, and where we're going in this conversation in this video. Valerie Nichushkin is 27 years old, 6'4", 209, a left-handed forward, signed till the end of 2030. So yeah, very, very long contract extension there at $6.125 million a season. And he also has some trade protection. He's got a no-move clause for the first three years of the deal. And then the last five years of the deal, he's got a modified no-trade. The entire video talking about Nichushkin with Toronto goes over his scouting report, but essentially he was drafted in 2013, was not really all too great with Dallas, left the NHL to the KHL, came back to Dallas in 2018-19, and was eventually bought out before signing with Colorado. This previous season he had 52 points in 62 games played, 25 goals, 27 assists, do the math, over 82 games, and you have yourselves, let's do that right here, 52 to v 62, multiplied out by 82, and he was on pace for 69 points, which is a pretty nice amount of points, if I do say so myself. He also had 15 points in 20 games in the postseason, cementing himself as one of the bona fide top six players on this team, with his goal-scoring ability, his offensive creativity, and his shot. Now, Nishushkin is a good player, and a lot of people would go out there and say, hey, he just really didn't fit the Dallas mold, they didn't really develop him in the ways that they wanted to, his best season in Dallas was his 18-year-old year in 2013-14, but coming into the Colorado system, there's a reason why he got locked up to an eight-year deal, it's because, yeah, he was really good, and he actually did have a tremendous growth process in this system. You could debate, oh, it's because he's playing with good players, but if you watch the Stanley Cup playoffs this year, you would have seen that Nichushkin is absolutely, like, a good hockey player, so... He's a Stanley Cup champion, and as a result, you have yourselves interviews being done with this player that transcend the English language. Let's go over onto sportexpress.ru and review this piece, taking a look at the very first interview done with Nichushkin after his NHL championship. This was published on July 29th, and... The website is in Russian, so I had to translate this via the Google machine. We lost the fifth match of the finals, and I started to freak out. It seemed like we were missing the cup, Nichushkin said. The article will be linked in the description if you can read Russian and you want to read it yourself, or if you want to be like me and translate this into English before reading, but I wanted to go over this piece not because of anything that Chushkin says about the Stanley Cup or about the 82-game season or his injuries throughout the year or whatever, the fact that he played the sixth game of, I believe it was the Stanley Cup Finals on some painkillers. I don't care about any of that stuff. What I wanted to talk about in this video was Valerie Nichushkin calling out a player on the opposing Tampa Bay Lightning squad in the finals, and he's a guy that's been building a reputation for himself in the worst way possible over the years, for being slimy, for being really just not a good sport at times, and for being somewhat dirty. Today we're talking about Nichushkin calling out Corey Perry, formerly of the Anaheim Ducks, formerly of the Dallas Stars, formerly of the Canadians, and formerly of, or not formerly of, currently of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, Corey Perry made history in this recent Stanley Cup Finals period by becoming the first player in NHL history to make the Stanley Cup Finals three years in a row with three different teams and to lose each time. He is not the first player in Stanley Cup Finals history to appear in the dance three years in a row on separate teams. That honor belongs to Marian Hossa, who in 2008 did so with the Penguins in 2009. He did so with the Red Wings. He lost both those times before eventually winning in 2010 as a member of the Blackhawks. Corey Perry did not have the same luck. He had 2020 with the Stars, 2021 with the Habs, and 2022 with the Lightning. He lost each time. You could say all you want about karma. You could say all you want about the fact that he's already had a Stanley Cup in 07 as a member of the Anaheim Ducks, but all in all, it's kind of a funny story to see Corey Perry make the dance three times in a row and lose each time. This is what Valerie Nichushkin said in this Russian interview about Mikhail Sergachev. Yeah, we're going over Sergachev first because it kind of leads into the Corey Perry question. Did you use any tricks on the verge against compatriots? Okay, that doesn't really make too much sense. The question is, did you use any underhanded tactics, I guess, against your opponents in the finals? 
Sergachev tried to poke and unsettle me a little bit, and I answered him. It's normal when the cup is just a stone's throw away. Wow, that's a very nice sentence. It's normal when the cup is so close, that's what he's trying to say. They would cling to him, even if we are both Russian. I'll say more. In the NHL playoffs, it's a psychological game when the dirty elements start to begin. Everyone is trying to get under each other's skin. So he's starting off by saying that Sergachev did a few poking and a few unsettling here and there, and that's okay, because Nichushkin did the same thing to him, and it's normal when they're both Russian guys, so, you know, they kind of feel that they're able to cling to each other and not really have too much animosity there. How is Corey Perry, though, the interviewer asked. No, I don't like his behavior, Nichushkin says. You can make a sharp verbal attack, even hit each other in the face if you want, but when a person deliberately falls on people's feet, on their knees in order to injure and incapacitate, then that is ugly. What good can it be if people try to take your health away by acting against the rules? Now, what is Nichushkin actually referring to here? Corey Perry deliberately falling on people's feet and on their knees in order to injure and incapacitate? Well, a lot of people are speculating that Nichushkin is referring to this one moment here where Corey Perry went out there and completely fell on JT Comfer's ankle before telling him to get up. You can see in the video that he's got his hands pressing on Comfer's ankle as he's yelling off to the guy while the referee is trying to make sure they're both able to get up. It's kind of an ugly moment here. It's Corey Perry going out there doing Corey Perry things. And yeah, I mean, Nichushkin does have a point. If you're both on the ground and another dude is like putting his full body weight on your ankle, that's going to make it pretty difficult to get up firstly, and secondly, it could mess you up when it comes to how you're actually going to try to rebalance yourself and get up. It's not really going to be all too pretty if somebody's trying to hold you down while you're in the process of doing so. And so Nichushkin is pretty much saying that, yeah, Sergachev and I, we're poking at each other, we're doing things, it's okay, but Corey Perry, I don't like the way he acts, I don't like the behavior he exhibits out there in the ice, because it's malicious, it's intent to injure, it's whatever, it's whatever, it's whatever. It's kind of funny, though, because it's not wrong. I mean, Corey Perry has been called out many times by other players, I believe, and if he hasn't, then he probably should have been more... There are times, admittedly, when it's not justified, like the John Tavares knee to the head collision for Montreal and Toronto back in 2021's first round. That was just a freak accident. Corey Perry apologized, and Corey Perry paid the price when he inevitably got the bell rung and he answered later on in that series. There are times when it's fully justified, like in the, what is it called, the Winter Classic between Dallas and Nashville in 2019-20, something like that. Yeah, he's a very dirty player when he wants to be, and I think everybody kind of knows that already. Everybody's kind of known that for years. It's kind of why I'm still kind of upset that Corey Perry won the, what was it, the Hart Trophy in 2010-2011 over Daniel Sedin because he got 50 goals that year. Yeah, sometimes shenanigans happen, and sometimes shenanigans are the case when it comes to NHL award voting. But either way, talk to the comments on your thoughts about Valerie Dechushkin, Colorado Avalanche forward, calling out Corey Perry of the Tampa Bay Lightning for his behavior in the Stanley Cup Finals, and I guess his behavior in general as a hockey player. I don't think that'd be too much of an inaccurate assessment to make here. Do you agree with what Nachushkin says? Do you agree that this is dangerous and not really something that belongs in the game? Do you agree that, hey, if you're just poking a guy, you're just kind of shoving around, you can hit each other in the face, that's okay. But what Corey Perry does takes a little bit too far over the line. Do you agree with that assessment? Talk to me in the comments, like your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaraj Rolls 99. And bye.